financial, surprisingly simple insurance. Good morning, everybody. It is 8.17 now, 12 degrees on a very wet and blustery morning. 18 is the high later today. Allison McGill is here. She's the editor-in-chief of Wedding Bells Magazine. Good morning. Good morning. So we're actually talking about guest etiquette for weddings. Yes. And it can be a minefield. Absolutely. I think we're going to have some, some good times here today yeah, because no there's so much to cover. Th th this thing which has come to my attention only recently about paying for your plate and people deciding how much they're going to give the bride and groom uh, contingent upon the meal they're served. Is this a new thing? No, very old, okay, very so this old. this is just new to me. Okay. So. <laughs> no, it's actually been around. That's the thinking that's been around, oh, I got to say for, you know, 20-ish years, I think. And, you know, the thought was always it was $100 a plate. And, you know, we know significantly that cost of weddings have gone up in meals and the type of wedding that you have. Um, and also, it's kind of a bad guideline because you can never guesstimate how much a meal costs. Right. So I always thought it was a bit of a peculiar thing for it to be a benchmark. I, I don't even really know where it came from, to be honest well, with you. What do you do? What do you do in terms of how, determining how much cash you get? the place where the reception Well, exactly. Is going to be and say, you know, and I don't know who came up with this $100 um, thinking. Maybe once upon a time, this was something that was out there. Um, but yeah, it's, it's an interesting benchmark, but it is not new. It's been around for a long time. Is the idea behind it is that you're asking your guests to help you pay for the wedding so you can sort of... Well, I guess the idea behind it is, is you know, if the guests know how much the meal is costing, mm -hmm. then they can sort of, you know, pay pay back and pay it forward into that. So it's sort of like meal plus interest. Has that gone up though? Because I feel like a lot of people now have sort of pushed that beyond the hundred dollars a person for. Oh, oh, absolutely. I would say the cost of that has gone up. Again, it's dependent on the type of wedding you have, where you're having it, the day you're having it. There's so many factors that go into that. But just as you pointed out, how are you supposed well, to know? How do you get that number? Exactly. Well, but you don't say exactly. What's Tell me answer? how do we get this number? No, there is no answer. There is you no answer. Know. It's one there's of those. There's no answer. Well, there's a thing that's floating out there. I mean, I guess if you really wanted to know, you could phone and phone a venue and say, "Listen, I'm coming to a wedding there. No, it it's on so this weekend." Right. It does. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and, and let, let's just take it all back down to when we're talking about gifts, because this is a subject when it comes to guest etiquette yeah, that yeah. gets really intense. Right. Is that? Um, you know, for the guests and for the couple, let's remember, you give a gift because you want to. And you give a gift because you, you are invited. Are invited and so, there's meaning behind that. So, so your, your premise is, if I get invited to a wedding, even though maybe there's no chance I can make this wedding, I still have to pay for the gift. I still have to send a gift. Typically, that is good etiquette, that you do send a gift. And, yes. and, and you are a big fan of getting a gift from the registry. Yes, I think the registry... Well, it's Tiffany's or something. Well, there's lots of affordable price points on many registries, and that's what couples do. Uh, but the registry takes the guesswork out of it for guests, and couples are really good about registering things for a range of prices. So yeah. honestly, yes. it is a really valuable tool. Sure. I have a friend who feels very strongly about not giving gifts for second marriages. Right, and that's... Or even marriages of people who are, have, are, get, are getting married for the first time when they're like in their 40s. Or that they've lived together, perhaps. Or they've lived together. All those things where right. she's like, you're set That's up with your call. life. Well, a lot of people, I think old generation of, uh, you know, people who didn't live together before they were married, right. you know, you know, I know my parents, friends of my parents, that type of thing. That's always been a bit of a question. Well, their household set up. So how does that roll out? Well, what if uh, they've only been together six months? Right. Again, you know, you have to, again, it's about the thought behind the gift. You want to give a gift. And, you know, if there's... Sky's the limit on what you can give. You don't have to give a million dollar gift. But there is an expectation though, if you're inviting guests for them to actually bring you a gift. So if you don't, if you come empty handed, there is a chance that that relationship could be right. spoiled. Well, I think to show up empty handed is just flat out rude. I yeah. mean, you're invited to a party, it's a celebration. Most people don't go to a dinner party yeah, without a bottle of wine or a dessert or flowers or something like that. Okay. Okay. What about the, yeah, the, the guests? The, the, if you can bring a date. If you are not invited with a plus one, can you bring someone? No. If it's not listed, um, you can't do that. Uh, you know, if you have an issue with it, you know, be forthright and maybe ask the couple about 
um, this on the invitation, but really to show up with somebody that you don't have a plus one on your invite, um, that's rude. And also the couple's not planning for that. So it puts people into a bit of a situation, the bride and the groom. Can you bring a friend if, if, you, if you have that option? If, if, if you're not in a relationship? One. If you have a plus one and there isn't mm -hmm. a relationship, yes, I would think you can bring a friend because it, it's not a specific thing. If you want it to be specific and you know who a person is dating, that plus one has a name on, on the invite. Now these destination weddings, Yes. These are these are a loaded thing too, <laughs> because if they're going to get married on the beach in Jamaica, right? And I got to fly down there on my own nickel, obviously, to go to the wedding. Yes. I feel my mere presence is a gift enough. Actually. Right. Well, you have you are already in for a lot of dough for a, you for are. a destination wedding, and you wedding. have to know that you have to make that commitment. But are you asking me, can you show up at a destination wedding because you spent money out of your own pocket without a gift? No. Yeah. Yeah. You can't. Oh, darn. <laughs> just, just it's, raining on Dave's parade. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's no, just I, good I think form. I understand that, but you know, it is a big uh, thing you're asking people. It is, and you know that's why destination weddings typically are fairly contained and small mm -hmm. because you are asking that. But I wanted to go back to the plus one question about invites and things like that because this is a uh, another thing that comes up a lot is the children question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can my can I bring my children if they're not a part of the invite package? Again, no. You know, a wedding is not a place for uh, babysitting. There aren't babysitters there, and you know. It, again, children are guests, so they would be part of that equation. Well, we were saying this during the break, that you are likely to lose friends over this, because I've heard people say, well, listen, I'm part of a family, and my five-year-old and my seven-year-old, they come with me wherever I go. Right. So well, why can't I, I, I think bring what's them? interesting is that, um, unfortunately, I think relationships can be broken when it comes to weddings. But what people forget with um, couples who are getting married, and uh, I was just having a conversation with a bride-to-be um, today, in your studio is that you know the bride and groom are people and you know them as a guest mm -hmm. you could be related to them an aunt or an uncle um, a close close friend there's no reason you can't ask honest questions and I think that for some reason or other the couple goes into this orb of we don't want to upset the apple cart we don't want to ask mm -hmm. but we're kind of upset and we don't know what to do so really communicating is key when it comes to um, bride grooms and guests yeah. oh, there's just so much expectation wow. on all sides of the equation when it comes to weddings. So this does help to clear it up. Thank you so much. Allison McGill, she's the editor-in-chief of Wedding Bells Magazine, a gorgeous publication. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Great talking to you. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Just minutes from downtown, the Docks year-round driving range offers CPGA instruction, unobstructed sightlines.